My name is Amy Dixon, and I am a visually impaired athlete on the U.S. paratriathlon national team. When I was 22 years old, I was uh, working in the restaurant business in order to pay for school. Everything started strobing and flashing one day. So it went away, and I didn't think anything of it, but started recurring quite frequently to the point where it would blind me for a moment. And I had a couple scary moments while driving, home at, home at night especially. And then it got to the point where I started bumping into my coworkers because it was a fine dining establishment that I worked at um, and my depth perception was off. So I would go to pour a glass of wine or a glass of water at the table and miss. And everybody started uh, labeling me as crash because I kept crashing into things. And I saw 2020, so I didn't realize that there was anything wrong with my eyes. And I had suffered from migraines from the time I was nine years old, so I thought maybe it had something to do with my headaches, and I went to see my neurologist. And he went to hold his hands out to the side and asked me how many fingers he was holding up, and I said, well, your arms are missing. There's a black curtain on either side of your shoulders. And so he immediately marched me downstairs to an ophthalmologist who took a look in the back of my eyes and diagnosed me with a very rare form of uveitis, an inflammatory autoimmune eye disease. I had had a sinus infection that triggered the onset of the disease about three weeks prior, and that was the beginning of the loss of my vision. One of the things I loved was, was studying wine, and I actually became certified as a sommelier by the Wine and Spirits Education Trust in New York City. And uh, I ended up working nearly 20 years in, in the wine business, so it was actually a great uh, job for me. And what I loved about it was that I knew, no matter what happened with my vision, that I would always have a roof over my head because I had my nose and my palate, and they became more pronounced as my vision continued to deteriorate, so I knew that I was gonna be quite good at my job. Thank goodness for Dr. Yanuzi. I mean, he saved my sight and uh, managed to slow down the disease for many years, enabling me to work and finish school and uh, live a fairly normal life. So after nine years, technology uh, became more advanced and now the standard protocol of treatment was no longer high dose steroid therapy. They now were using certain types of chemotherapy, again, to suppress the immune system like it does in, in cancer cells. And so at 32, I got a decent case of bronchitis and within a few weeks, it uh, wiped out most of my remaining vision. So I went from being able to drive to suddenly having a hard time walking out to my mailbox. It was really drastic. I didn't realize that people with vision loss had jobs, careers, did athletics that was not in my wheelhouse at all. When I thought of someone who was blind, I thought somebody who can see nothing. You know, I thought it was blackness. So a normally sighted person has 180 degrees of peripheral vision from right to left and top to bottom. I am down to five degrees of peripheral vision in my right eye, so about 2% left of usable vision, and about 10 degrees in the left, so about 5% five, 5 of usable vision. In addition, just to add insult to injury, with that vision loss that I do have, I have what's called photopsia. So everything is strobing and flashing like a, like a bad signal to the television. The higher my heart rate is, the faster that flashing occurs. So when I'm racing as a visually impaired athlete, I have no vision at all. I, all I can see is white light. So when my heart rate's below 165, that flashing is a little bit slower. But if you were to walk in front of me or past me during one of those flashes, I may never know that you were there, which is why my guide dog has job security and why I need to use a cane because if there's a car coming and I look both ways to cross a street, I may miss a car. My disease had come out of remission at the age of 32. And at this time, I gained 75 pounds. And so I was trying to figure out how to move with comfort and everything just hurt, my whole body hurt. And someone had suggested to me, well, you're a former swimmer and I hadn't swam in 15, 20 years at this point. They said, why don't you get back in the pool? And that's because that's a great way. You've got the buoyancy. It, it'll feel good on your body. And I thought, wow, that's, that's a really good idea. So I joined my local YMCA with a friend of mine and started swimming. And um, I hadn't swam a mile in 20 years, but I was super excited because it was the first physical thing I had done since going through chemo and steroid treatment. Water for me, especially as someone who is an adult who's visually impaired, is freedom because it's the one time of day that I don't need the assistance of a dog or a cane or another person. And then I immediately got to thinking, well, what else can I do? 
And so I had seen people coming out of spin classes every day at the Y and the music sounded great and the instructor was super high energy and I thought, well, that looks like fun. I'll try it. I had so much fun and I lost another 20 pounds doing spin classes. And then I finally was at a weight that I was comfortable running. I started posting a little bit on social media and someone said, you're swimming and biking and running. Have you thought about doing triathlon? I said, how do blind people do that? <laughs> like, that sounds dangerous. I haven't ridden a bike in 20 years. And certainly you don't want me on a bike right now. And they said, oh no, no, you do it with a partner and I would be happy to guide you for your first race. And so I started training within a disabled track club in New York City called Achilles International. And they met every week in Central Park. And so I would take the train with my guide dog into the city and someone, they had volunteers to hold on to your dog. And I would run with this group and do some swim workouts. I did my first race in June of 2013. And here I am, you know, seven years later on the US national team uh, heading for my first Paralympics. I do have enough vision that I can see the black line on the bottom of the pool as long as my heart rate's not too high. When it goes too high, then I know that I'm at the wall in 17 strokes. What's interesting to me is that 78% of the visually impaired population is unemployed. That's a scary statistic. Of any disability, blindness tends to be the most unemployable, if you will. And so what these apps and these devices are doing is enabling people like me to be able to live normal, fully functioning lives and be regular parts of the workforce. And that is so empowering to those of us with a disability to be able to be included as part of any company. With technology, I don't even know where to start because every week I'm hearing about new apps, new smartwatches, new phone types, um, all the technology and software built into computers now. And it's become mainstream. I'm super excited because this morning I got to read a magazine article uh, that I've been dying to sit down with, with the Microsoft Seeing AI app. And it made it super easy and super fast, which would have normally taken me probably 20 minutes to do so, was down to four. The Microsoft Seeing AI app, I think is gonna be so empowering to people like myself because it's available on any smartphone for free. That's a game changer because most of the technology out there right now is either extremely expensive, prohibitively, and not covered by insurance. This is something that everyone can use on their phone. Technology's really enabled me to live a better life. Probably a dog lying on the rug. The Microsoft Seeing AI app enables me to read magazine articles, sit down with a great book, recognize faces, all the things that are extremely difficult for me to do on a daily basis. I am grateful is, I think, the most important thing. I think gratitude, knowing that uh, right now I'm living at the best time in history for someone with a disability to be able to live the fullest life possible.